Grace and peace in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth to the elect across the earth. We love y'all so much. Okay, get ready. The mighty king is coming back soon. Amen. Welcome back to the dinner table. I'm very excited about this message. It is a short message. It's going to be a quick meal. We're going to just eat real quick at the dinner table. And boom, we'll see you next time. Amen. Sometimes it's how it is. Amen. Sometimes eat quick little small meals. And then there's other times where it's a feast. Although it's going to seem like a feast because it's an amazing revelation from Jesus Christ. The king of the kitchen, I thought you knew. Oh, you must be new to this channel or something. He's not just the king of kings. He is not just the lord of lords. He's the chef of all chefs. Can I get a name, man? Amen. And, of course, I'll be your waiter. I'm going to serve you this amazing dinner that the Lord has cooked up for you. The disciples asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. I think it's wise for us to do the same thing, huh? We need to learn how to pray better, more accurate. So we're going to start a little series, a mini series. So maybe two, three or four episodes. They're not going to be back to back, okay? But it's going to be on praying, different tactics of praying, why some prayers are not breaking through, and so on and so forth. But first, let's pray. Amen. We always wash our hands before we eat. Amen. In the spirit. Now, wash your hands with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, forgive me of all my sins and wash me in your holy blood. I thank you for this meal I'm about to eat, Lord. May I digest it and may it change me. Destroy any powers of darkness that would hinder me. And Lord, I give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. And help me to be thankful for what you give me at this dinner table. In the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah, I pray. Amen. Okay, well, I'm excited. Lord Jesus, speak through me, guide me. May I get out of the way and just use me for your glory, Lord Jesus. May your word go forth with power and authority to correct convict to heal to restore to be a light unto our feet and strength to our bones amen so in jesus name i hope you got your notepad i know you got you better have your bible and i know they be running around whenever we try to look for them we can't find them but i hope you got a pen huh treat this like a dinner table classroom setting okay take notes because you might meditate on this message and add to what I give you. And maybe you could put it in the, the uh, comment section below. Okay, we love y'all. As far as announcements, uh, I don't want to dwell on that too much. Just a couple. One is um, ATL Conference September. You got literally about a month. Okay. If you're coming, you need to email us at conferenceatl2019 at yahoo.com. We need your name, you know, social media, who you are, you know, um, how your walk is with the Lord, um, you know, and so on and so forth. Just send us how many people are coming with you. Um, but definitely, if you're coming, you need to start making moves. Don't be last minute. Any other announcements? Uh uh, quite a bit, but we're going to leave it alone, okay? Are y'all ready for this? I want you to write this down. To earnestly pray. To earnestly pray. That's going to be the name of this first segment. Of, of course, like I said, we're going to have different topics. It's going to be very exciting from time to time. But uh, this first one, I'm telling you, it's a, it's a life-changing message. And especially um, after re-uploading the second Genesis, for the most part, most of y'all stayed in the spirit and didn't get overwhelmed by the uh, picture of a round earth. Listen, as far as flat earth, either way, okay, I'm not for or against. I haven't done my research. I don't act like I know it all. I don't want you to lose a blessing. I mean, for you to only comment on the picture of the earth in the beginning is ridiculous. You really missed out on an amazing message from Christ that teaches you a deep revelation of what it means when you go and you minister to the lost. Why don't you rewatch that video 
and forget a whole flat earth, round earth, square earth, or rectangle earth. Leave that alone for now and just watch the message and don't let the enemy take that seed from you, okay? The second Genesis is a mighty word from the Lord. Now, while we're on this whole topic of winning souls, I really wanted to do this message real quick to earnestly pray. This revelation is not talked about. And a lot of times when your declarations and pro uh, proclamations are, are going unfruitful, this is probably why. Even when you witness to people or you're trying to save one of your family members and it doesn't seem nothing is working, this mystery right here, this revelation right here is more than likely why nothing's happening. Now that should excite you. Okay, let's cut right to it, huh? I, I'm, hey, I'm a good waiter. You know I bring the drinks on time. I, I make sure you replenish. You got your silverware. Like, I'm here to serve. Anyways, so let's get into the message. Amen. Okay, so what is it to pray? What is prayer? What is supplication? What does it mean to pray through till you break through? These are all questions, and you deserve an answer. In this first segment... To earnestly pray. Now, first off, what does earnestly mean? Well, it's got multiple different definitions. Sincere, right? Passionate, with, with an intense conviction, right? Or very serious is another way to um, define the word earnestly. So just let that sink in now. To earnestly pray. To pray with sincere, intense conviction very seriously. That's probably one of the best ways I'll describe it um, in a sentence. Okay, before we get to the meat of that, I want us to talk just, you know, some scriptures. So we're going to go to Colossians. So we're going to go to Colossians chapter 4. Okay, so chapter 4. Let's see what it says in verse 2. It says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. With all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance. That's actually uh, one of the other names of another segment on this in, this uh, praying uh, this praying series. Okay, so the door of utterance is another one, but we're not going to talk about that today. To speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. See, there's mysteries to Christ. This should be your greatest desire more than anything else. The, your favorite videos on this channel should not be like exposing the Cheesecake Factory, although it's beneficial. But these are the messages you should be excited for. The ones that reveal how to get closer to Christ, more intimate, how to pray better, how to live better. Um, that's, that's what you should desire the most. So that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Now, what did it say though? It said, continue in prayer and watch in the same with Thanksgiving. So to continue in prayer, what does that mean? I don't need to get the, the Greek interpretation. I hope not. It means to continue in prayer. It's that simple. Ephesians chapter 6 is another one. You want to write this down. Okay. As we're uh, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. What does perseverance mean? It means you have to last, you have to endure. You see, here's this intense conviction to be sincere means you also have to be able to endure. That means there's going to be times where you, God wants you to pray for hours and it's going to feel like you can't even, you can't even like take it anymore. But picture yourself running through the football field with a football and actually fainting at the five yard line. I mean, that would be crazy, right? So if you give up too early when God wants you to pray intensely, it'll be that one minute you stop, five minutes later, you are about to break through. Wait for God to tell you. See, you, we got to stop thinking we're in control. The Lord Jesus Christ is in control of our life. He's the one that decides how we pray, how long we pray, 
when we start, when we stop. He should be the one that dictates that. He should be the one that governs that authority in our life. Amen. So um, also write down 1 Timothy chapter 2, uh, 1 and 2, and also 2 and 8, okay? We're not going to read those, but write them down. Also Philippians 4, 6, okay? We're going to go there real quick, being that we're right next to it. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. You know, he's dropping a really big nugget there. It's not enough to just pray, but you also got to have supplication, but you also have to have thanksgiving. You have to be grateful. Now, my wife and I have two special prayers that we do together and with the boys. Um, I have don't think I've ever made it public, but we have a prayer we do in the morning and a prayer we do in the evening. They're different prayers. Um, but one of the first things we say is, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for another day. Thank you for another chance to do more for you, to get closer to you. Thank you for everything you've done, everything you're doing, and everything that you will do. Now, I'm not going to go further than that, but thanksgiving, right? What is supplication? It's making your request known to God, the Bible says, right? Sometimes we put on a false sense of humility where, Lord, forget about me. Uh, no, stop. Yes, we have to pray for others, right? We have to look. The Bible says look for the needs of your brother more than yourself. We get that. But you also got to pray for yourself, you got to ask God what you need. I'm not talking a new Bentley. I'm talking what you need in your life. He knows what is good for you and what is not. He knows what he's going to answer you. He knows. He knows what prayers he's going to answer for you and which ones he's going to say no to. But make your request known to God. You have to treat him as a father. I would be offended if my sons did never want to come up to me and ask me things that they needed whether it's a new soccer ball or maybe their bike is getting old and they don't want to tell me oh, what kind of relationship would they have with me if that was the case they should know I am their provider and protector as far as a human being right they should be willing to come and ask me with respect thanking me for what I've done for them but as a child of God, moving with faith to know, hey, if I tell my dad I need something, he loves me. He's going to do his best. Unless there's something I don't know about, he just won't do it for me. Okay? Now, there's so many scriptures about praying. And again, because we're making this a little mini-series, I'm not going to like go over everything. But what I want to talk about is really focusing on the earnestly part, to earnestly pray. Well, who's the greatest example of this? I mean, come on, let's think about it. It's Christ, right? Go to Hebrews 5. I want you to see something. Hebrews 5. Like I said, I, I really don't believe this message is going to be that long. But it's okay. Sometimes it's good to eat a quick meal together and hit the road, right? So Hebrews 5. Look at what it says about Jesus Christ in verse uh, 7. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears. Remember that sermon I preached not too long ago, Sowing in Tears? If you haven't watched that, watch it, okay? It's a very important message, okay? In, in my opinion, the wrong videos go viral, you know, I mean, really, like, the Cheesecake Factory Exposed video is, like, at, I think it's, like, 70,000 views. I get it. It's intriguing and everything. But, I mean, sowing in tears is a life-changing message. It's, like, crazy to me. But blessed are you who know to appreciate, you know, the Exposed videos, but to really want these type of videos that... Make you love Christ more, to draw you closer to Him, to give you more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding how to walk better with Him. That's my job. That's our job here is to feed you properly through Christ. Amen. So it says here, with strong crying and tears unto Him that was able to save Him from death and was heard in that He feared. 
though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Now, man, that's a whole different mystery. I'm not even going to tap it. <laughs> <laughs> That's another Bible study, y'all. But you notice how he spoke about Jesus, how he prayed so diligently. He earnestly prayed because he knew the war that was to come. I really love this message. Also write down Hebrews 7.25. Now, I'm going to give you all of these, but I'm only going to read a couple. I want you to write these down. We're going we're gonna to start with Luke. Luke chapter 5, verse 16. But read the whole chapter. You know what I mean? Also, uh, Luke uh, chapter 6, verse 12. But again, read the whole chapter. Uh, Luke 11. Read the whole chapter. Mark 1, 35. As well as Mark 6, 46. But like I said, read the whole chapter. Okay, you got now Matthew. Uh, of course, we have Matthew 14, 23. And we have Matthew 26, 36. Now, we're just going to read a couple of them. Go to Luke 6. I want to show you something. I mean, this is Christ. It don't get better than this. This is, I want you to see a pattern. I want you to see something now. <laughs> Look at what it says in verse 12. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called unto his disciples and of them he chose 12 whom he named apostles. Wait a minute. Can't you see he earnestly prayed? Sincere, intense convictions, conviction and serious praying. That's what earnestly means. And he had to endure with his praying, like we read earlier. He prayed all through the night. I'm going to, now keep it real with me, okay? How many of you actually pray for hours? Now, some of you might be like, well, brother works. I mean, you know, <laughs> I got eight children and two jobs and I'm single mother. You know what I mean? What you want? Listen, I don't want to hear it. You can make a way. And did you know that you can be in prayer while watching the children? You can be in prayer while on the job. We don't have to get religious and legalistic where we got to light candles and, ah, and let everybody know we're praying. You could be praying on your lunch break. Instead of spending an hour trying to go somewhere to get a meal, it's fast. And spend that hour in prayer in your car. I mean, wreak havoc on the job in the spirit realm. Praying to the Lord and coming against the evils in your job at night. Now, listen, statistically, they say uh, people spend more than four hours a day on technology. You know, 20 minutes here, a half hour there. You watch on Facebook. Let's say you're scrolling through and you watch five random video clips. What if they're 15 minutes long each? How, how long is that? Think of how quick four hours can be consumed and you wouldn't even realize it. But yet, if I tell you to picture yourself late at night praying for four hours, you might be like, bro, that's... <laughs> That's a long time to be in prayer. I and mean, my legs are going to fall. How many of y'all been ever been praying and your leg fall asleep in the closet? <laughs> that is the worst. I tell God, I'm like, Lord, my leg is hurt right now. It's falling. You know that, that like, it's not a numb feeling. But if you, if you tap your leg, it gives you that sensation. You're like, ah, when the blood flow ain't going. But. You might think, man, if I'm in there that long, I'm going to run out of things to say. Stop thinking mentally about it. Can, can you do yourself that favor? Stop mentally dealing with the gospel first. You deal with it spiritually first. Then it connects with the mind, and now you're operating out of the mind of Christ. A lot of y'all fail before you even set sail. Let me say that again. That should be on a t-shirt. A lot of people fail before they even set sail. Why? Because in their mind, they've already like, man, I'm not doing that four hours. I'm going to run out of things and say, how do you know? Once you get flowing in the Holy Ghost, once you, once, once you, you feel yourself 
breaking through, I mean, two hours can go by like that. I'm telling you. My wife and I will give you guys testimonies. But you notice that Jesus earnestly prayed that whole night. What was it for? There was something he was praying for. There was things he was praying against. He was establishing his bride. Think about this. He was establishing the 12 apostles. I mean, this, this is amazing. It, it, you just heard it. Right? He prayed. Listen to what it says in verse 12. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called unto his disciples and of them he chose 12 whom he named apostles. You see that? Now, some of y'all might be like, man, but if I pray all night, I'm not saying do it every night. You know, God knows you can't do it every night. You can't break night every night in prayer. But you should dedicate. But here's the interesting thing you got to know about praying. A lot of times you don't choose when to pray. God will choose when he wants you to really pray uniquely and differently and earnestly. What I mean by that? Of course you could choose when you want to pray. And rightly so, God will hear you. But the Lord chooses when he wants to supernaturally visit you. There's been nights in this kitchen where I'll just come out here just to sing some songs to the Lord and pray a little bit. And in my mind, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give the Lord a half hour. One thing you can't do is assume you could dictate how long you're going to be in the presence of God. Now, God knows you got things you got to do. And what if you, you, you know, you got a big meeting you got to get to. You know, God is not going to be like, how dare you go to the meeting? Stay and pray to me. I mean, there might be times he has you do something radical, but what I'm saying, though, is I was out here and I started to get into prayer, and, and I literally, I could feel the power of God enter my house. I want to explain this to you. It, it was very terrifying. Now, at the time, we had two cute little birds. They were those cockatoos, cockatails, or whatever they're called. Very cute little birds. But um, they escaped. <laughs> we, uh, we love when we can be a blessing for animals, creatures, you know what I'm saying? And we, we got this big bird cage. I mean, it's, it's, it was made for a parakeet. Excuse me, was it a parrot? Yeah, that's the name of the bird. It was made for a parrot, which are big birds. But they were these cute little parakeets. You know, they're only about this big. You know, they're only about this big. And... Um, I didn't know, but every time I would push the cage out to our deck, we have an upper upper deck, you know what I mean? Every time I would push it, it would rattle and slowly open the bottom lid just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. And one day, you know, I didn't even realize it. They found it and they they just patiently waited and maybe like two more days it vibrated more and it slowly opened a little more and they were gone you know what I'm saying they packed seed in a little knapsack and flew away like you know what I mean escaped from Alcatraz um but hey I'm 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 happy for them you know they they got they they who the son of man says free is free indeed I guess the king of glory wanted to release them but it was beautiful to have them. They would, you know, we would talk to them and they would hear us singing in the house. And But to make a long story short, though, something interesting happened. They were in the kitchen and I was over by the stove over there. And I felt the presence of Christ so heavy. Man, even just thinking about it now. I dropped to my knees, and when I felt the Lord show up in the kitchen, now some of y'all might not understand what that means. You're like, well, God is everywhere. Eh, yes, but you don't. if you don't know what it means for him to show up, there's different ways God will give you his presence. That's another teaching. I'm not going to get into it, but the birds were terrified. They were flapping their wings because here the Almighty is visiting this house so to make a long story short i was here way more than a half hour okay you really can't do that with god 
because it'll be that one night you don't expect to pray. He will call you to pray. One of the biggest rules is obey God. When you hear him call you to go pray, when you can, you know what I'm talking about. You can feel that desire and that urge where you just want to pray. Have you ever been driving and you can feel the Holy Spirit presence all over you, especially your back, your stomach? I told my wife, I'm like, hun, I'm about to pull over this car for real. Like his presence is so heavy right now. Those are signs that he wants to talk with you. He wants you to go see him. I don't care how busy you are, make time for him. Don't make God the back burner of your life. Make him the front. He's, he deserves your attention. He deserves to be number one in our life. Amen. Now, Jesus earnestly prayed and I just gave you a bunch and you can find more where he prayed he prayed he prayed he would pray the night before and he would go into a city and you know bind up demons and cast out devils and rebuke sicknesses and diseases and this earnestly pray thing is deeper than we think and where the preacher is talking about it okay I want to show you James. Now, this is the this is a big one now, okay? This is where I got that message from. I want you to go to James chapter 5. Come on. James chapter 5. I want you to see what it says in verse 16 going down. Y'all ready for it? Confess your faults one to another. And pray one for another. That you may be healed. Listen to this. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. What does fervent mean? It means earnestly. It means having a passion. Intense prayer of a righteous availeth much. But what if I told you this more? Watch this. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly. There it is. He prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Now what is, what is James talking about? Well, if you go to 1 Kings... Okay, go to 1 Kings with me. Let's go. Come on. Like I said, it's a quick meal, but an amazing word from the king of the kitchen. And again, I am honored to serve it to you. But just remember, your gratitude determines your latitude. Be thankful and be grateful for the meals that God gives you through this ministry. Okay. Um, here we are. 1 Kings 17 verse 1 going down. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitant of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, mm, We stop right there. So this is interesting now. Elijah the prophet declares a very radical statement. I mean, this statement was so bold, you better be right. One of those, you know what I'm saying? And he says, as the Lord lives, it shall not rain. I shut up heaven by the authority of God. Just let that sink in. But wait a minute. Hold on a minute. Keep your hand in 1 Kings. Wait for me. I'll be right back. Give me a minute. I'm just going to take an Uber real quick to the book of James. Okay? And I want to show you this now. Let's let's reread this cuz this is this is a life changer. This is James 5 now again verse 7. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. What does that mean? He wasn't perfect. He wasn't at the hotel buying hookers. You know, it, it's so ridiculous how Christians nowadays, when you expose a wolf who's lying or stealing or swindling or 
having an affair and like, well, he's not perfect and who are you to judge him? We're all brothers and you're a mean man. And it's like, come on, man, that's not a little mistake. You know what I'm saying? We're not talking like something like that. The word is just saying Elijah, he also has struggles. You know what I'm saying? But he was a man subject to like passions as we are. Listen now, he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. But wait a minute, do you think he told Ahab and them, it will not rain. Oh, Father, please don't let it rain. No, no, no. Let me tell you what happened. Elijah the prophet declared and then prepared. He declared and then prepared. You see it? That's been your missing key, sister. That's been your missing key, brother. You have been declaring but not preparing. What farmer? <laughs> I don't even want to do it, Lord. <laughs> Lord, I love you. 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 So, and we love y'all. So, Elijah declared, but then he ran off into a cave and he earnestly prayed, Oh, Lord, I don't want to. You know, I could only imagine what he said to the Lord. You know, the details that are not in these pages. Because remember, this is a historical book. These are at, these are factual stories that literally happen. We will literally see Elijah one day in heaven. Like, that's amazing. You're literally going to meet Peter and Paul and Priscilla and Aquila and Lydia and Eunice and Esther. And, yeah, I mean, I mean, come on. This is amazing. But I want you to see this now. He made this proclamation and declaration that God is going to shut up the heavens through him, that he declared it. But then he went off and earnestly prayed through it that it would come to pass. Let that sink in. This is amazing revelation. So in other words, a lot of times... When you declare something, you're only making it halfway because you're not going home later that night and earnestly praying for it. You know, it's so sad that the Native Americans had rain dances, you know what I mean? And they weren't even serving the true and living God. They had spirits they were worshiping and you heard of shamanism, but they would literally pray for rain for days if they had to. And dance around, oh, you know the deal. They would get around a fire and do their ritual to a false god. But could you imagine the Native Americans that became born again with the gospel? Imagine their prayer life must be intense. Their appreciation, they're very humble people. They're very appreciative. They use everything on that animal because they don't want to waste anything. I actually have Native American in me, and I didn't even know that. I thought I was just Finnish and Scottish, and I'm like, wow, like, I got Native American in me. Because I have that, I have a very grateful spirit, like, and that's, I know it's Christ. You know, I thank, I'm so thankful. Can I be more thankful? Yes. But I always get grieved by ungrateful people, users, and it's just like, ugh. You know what I mean? Because it's so opposite of Christ. But my point is, is if the people of the world and pagans can earnestly pray for rain, think of what it was like for a true man of God who was serving the real God of heaven and earth when he earnestly prayed and said, oh, Lord, Lord, you know, what if in his mind for a minute there he had a struggle in his members? He don't want to bring God's name to shame. He don't want to look like some false prophet when he's not. That's a heavy thing to say. Because if it started raining a week later, they'd have been like, <laughs> oh, this dude is bugging. A lot of times, miracles haven't been coming your way, not because you're not growing in faith to declare it, but you're not ready to prepare for it. You have not been earnestly praying. Some of your family members, they're not getting saved. Your own husband that you complain about or your wife that you complain about because they're not on fire for God. But are you, uh, are you earnestly praying for your spouse? Are you earnestly praying for your children? 
Only old elders in, in ministry will know what I'm talking about. And those that are really living the life, you will you will know what I'm talking about. There are times when you are earnestly praying the Lord to the point where once you get broken and you're weeping before him for a specific need or, or, or someone to be delivered or uh, some miracle to happen, you can. it almost feels like your stomach is going to rupture because his power is so strong. Have you ever been in the presence of God? And you're praying, you're perfectly healthy, you don't have a runny nose or nothing, but you get in the presence of God and you can tell he's showing up. See, a lot of people don't understand that God shows up. He is in the closet when you enter in, but he has different types of his presence. I can't do it, Lord. I can't. I can do all things through Christ. When I say that, what I mean is it's so heavy right now. His presence, I, I can't handle certain amounts. I have to just chill. Do you know that he has different types of his presence? You know, have you ever noticed he'll show up when you're in the prayer closet and all of a sudden your nose is running, you're weeping like, whoa, where are these boogers coming from? You didn't have a runny nose. It's because your flesh is trembling because it realizes the living God of heaven and earth has showed up. And your flesh is an enemy of the spirit. So there's, there's a trembling there. But to earnestly pray. Let me ask y'all a question. How many of y'all, when you witness to the lost, make sure at some point you earnestly pray that day for them? That you make a mental note of all the people, maybe five souls. Maybe five souls actually took the time to hear what you had to say and they did a prayer and they gave their life to the Lord. You gave them the phone number. Maybe you gave them the ministry website to, to get them fed and you kept them in touch. You told them to email us and together we're working as a team, right? Because you're supposed to be fishing for God and bringing people into this ministry to be fed properly, right? But what about earnestly praying afterwards? Oh, this is so good. Come on, this message is amazing. Thank you, Lord. Listen to me carefully. Satan is earnestly trying to take the seed out of that man as soon as you pray for him. Um, Satan is earnestly trying to send people to remove that woman from the feeling she's having and the joy she just got by hearing you, sister. You told her about the gospel. She started to tear up. She prayed. But when she walked away, the powers of darkness were earnestly praying against her. And you're not going to earnestly pray for her? Can't you see that going out and ministering to the lost is only half the battle? In fact, the greater battle is later on in your closet or your cave. That you're earnestly praying. Let's say her name was Renee. Let's say her name was Renee, right? Later on that night, you don't know it. But later on that night, after you got done ministering to her and you guys parted ways because you just met her, you know, usually when you're out ministering, that's what happens, right? But later on that day, her ex hit her up on, on Facebook. Baby, I'm back in town. You know, it's been a couple years. I've been really thinking about you. Who sent him? The devil. Because he's earnestly coming against the gospel that's been brought to her. And now you don't realize it, but God wanted you to go in that closet at that appointed time and get on your knees and pray. Even if you got to pray for two hours for that one soul, are you willing to do it? You're earnestly praying that it'll rain on her. Oh, come on. Because remember, if you read in chapter 18, later on, Elijah had to pray for the rain to drop. Three and a half years, y'all. Okay, we'll read that after. But my point is, is you got to earnestly pray after you declare, after you proclaim, or after you minister. When you declare something, when you declare war, let's say you're in, okay, here's another one. Let's say you're in spiritual warfare and you have declared war over the murder spirit in your city. Let's say you live in Chicago or somewhere in Missouri when, where the crime rate is St. Louis or uh, New Jersey or Philly or one, New York or Miami or something. Every place got different principalities and powers. But let's say, for example, you live in Chicago and you and a few saints, you got together and you're, you're boldly declaring war against the principality of murder 
and gangsterism and the spirits that come with it. And you're in the name of Jesus. We declare war. We bind you in Jesus' name. After you get done doing spiritual warfare, you don't look at your, your, your brothers and sisters and be like, hey, high five. We did our thing. Nope. Nope. Now you have to go and earnestly pray that it comes to pass. Now you have to go into the presence of your mighty king and earnestly pray through and say, Lord, we had unwaged a war against this demon. Lord, push him out. Push him out of the city, Lord. Convict the hearts of those with guns, Lord. Lord. See, you're earnestly praying after you proclaimed, after you declared. But now you got to get alone and earnestly pray to the Lord for him to a... Oh, that's good. He got to give it his approval. You got to get approval from the Most High. Right? It's like anything. There has to be steps, even in business. You can't just, if you own a business or something like that, usually you'll have other people too that are there, whatever they're called, you know what I mean? And you can't just cut a check for a, you know, whatever. It has to be approved. You know what I'm saying? Even time off, when you ask for time off, it has to go up management to management. They have to say, okay, she wants three days off in a month. Okay, I sign off on it. Think of it this way, when you declare, when you proclaim, or when you witness to, to the lost or many other things, go get it signed off by, go get it signed off by Christ. Bring it to him. Earnestly pray. Oh, this is amazing. So now, now you know the mystery on why a lot of people ain't really winning souls. Have you ever noticed that there'd be a lack of fruit? Like, for example, you'll go out and you'll think you did a great job, man. You done talked to like 10 different people about the gospel, but not one of them called you back. Not one of them contacted this ministry when you gave them the website and the YouTube channel. And seven out of 10 of them, you see on the block a week later, and you're just like, you're kind of discouraged. You're like, man... Man, I really put a whole lot into her. You know what I mean? She was tearing up because you did not go into that cave and earnestly pray. I love this message. I love this message. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. I had planted and Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. You see that? So then neither is he that planted anything, neither is he that watered, but God that gives the increase. So whether you plant or you're somebody who waters, but who goes to pray for God to give the increase? It's God that approves of rain to fall and God that approves of rain to stop. Don't get it twisted. Not only can you pray that God will rain down on the seeds that you planted in people, but you can also pray for God to dry up a ministry that's evil. Ooh, you could pray that God will stop the rain from a, a false prophet. That they will come to repentance. Oh, that's good. But be led. Make sure you're led. Or oh, God will check you. But you got to get God's approval and you got to earnestly pray and no servant is greater than their master. Who are we to be microwaving prayers when Jesus was up all night until the sun came up? He was earnest. I could tell you right now in that verse we read because I would love to read them all with you, but I'm trying to keep this video type short. I told you it's a quick rib and mashed potato meal. We in and out. Boom. Finger food, you know what I mean? Barbecue or something. But read each of those gospel verses I gave you where it shows Jesus leading by example. But I can almost guarantee you in that moment he was earnestly praying for his disciples. That he was choosing, that he was naming apostles. He spent all night into the morning just for them. Isn't that amazing? Leonard Ravenhill said, no believer, no servant of God is greater than their prayer life. 
I mean, let that sink in. Let that sink in. That's why this whole prayer, uh, you know, series that we're doing right now is so important. If you help spread that Cheesecake Factory video that's going crazy right now, shame on you if you don't help spread this video. This is much more important. When we do exposed videos, they're only about, they only make up about 15% of over 300 videos that we have. See, that's what it's supposed to be. They're still important. We have to expose darkness. But this is more important, y'all. Wow. To earnestly pray. Remember what Jesus said in Luke 22? Yeah, 22. He said that, I pray that your faith will not fail. Right? Ask Jesus. Because he intercedes for us. He is the intercessor. He stands in the gap for us. He prays for us. Think of how he earnestly prays for you and me. With passion and sincerity. Very serious. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Effectual, what does that mean? It means you get things done. We got soldiers in this ministry. They may not be able to help a lot financially, but they're prayer warriors. They're so on fire for God. My wife and I, we got one sister and she knows who she is. She feels so bad. She's like, I'm, I hate the fact my husband don't let me support because her husband's an unbeliever. We're like, sister, please, please, you support by your prayers, by being a prayer warrior in this ministry. There's other people who are more well off that can make up for where you can't financially. Your prayers are important to us. See, that's what type of ministry we are. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, there's a lot of pastors and a lot of so-called preachers. They're only worried about one way you can help their ministry. Shame on them. Now, we're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. We know money is a weapon, the Bible says, and we know it's common sense. You want a ministry to grow, you should help that ministry. But if that's all the pastor's concerned about, shame on him. Matter of fact, he's, he has a foolish spirit on him. We look for prayer warriors. We look for those who have passion. And a lot of times, I'm just going to keep it real, it's people that are struggling, people that are suffering, people that really don't have a, a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like this, this word, I'm so grateful for this word. Man, but I want to show you a lesson. Remember I told you 1 Kings, now go to 18. 1 Kings 18. Because we already read 17, where you heard Elijah declare it. He, like, look at Ahab. The, you, ain't, you ain't getting no rain. Three and a half years, what's up? You ain't getting no rain. But then he had to go off and pray earnestly. Earnestly. Because, you know, first off, we never want to represent the Lord wrong. Never. Have you ever been there? And you got to realize the struggle is real. Have you ever been there where you see someone like crippled at a bus stop or blind or something? And you know that God can heal her. But you like, man, there's like 30 people around and I don't want to disrespect the Lord. And be like, open your eyes. And she's like, I'm still blind, sir. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to make sure you're ready. When my wife and I were led in the spirit to do certain signs, wonders, and miracles... You know, there still was a little bit of a war in, in the members because you're like, wow, this is happening, Lord. You really want us to pray for that person? And when we seen the miracle, we were just in tears like, Lord, thank you. Because we have to walk by faith and not by sight and stop being afraid. But even Jesus' miracles progressed. Did you know that? That's another teaching. Remember, he turned the water into wine, it says, and from that, his miracles manifested it, it, they became bigger and greater. Start with small miracles and thank God for those before you try to pull someone out of a casket. You see what I'm saying? Now, 1 Kings 18. Let's get it. Come on. Here we go. We're almost done with this meal. We're going to go to 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink. There is the sound of abundance of rain. You see that? So the three and a half years was up. 
So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. That's interesting. That's a very odd way of praying. If you can visualize that, but was there something inter Was there something we don't know about that? That way of praying. But look what it says. But it, the the more important thing is he he bowed down, right, and said to his servant, "Go up now and look towards the sea." And he went up and looked and said, "There is nothing." And he said, go again seven times. See, that lets you know sometimes you'll pray for that storm, but you're going to look up and see nothing. Don't give up. That's part of the war. You got to know there's a war in the heavens and you're helping from underneath and God is doing what he does from above and you're working as a team with God. How awesome. But he prays seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time, he said, Behold, there arise a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up and say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariots and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. Wait a minute, a small cloud? This is what I'm telling you about gratitude. The Bible says, be ready to, when, when, woo! The book of Peter says, whenever you see the littlest sign of hope, prepare. Whenever you see the littlest sign of hope in somebody, be ready. Can't you see the revelation? Don't be ungrateful if it's just a little cloud because you're expecting this big storm cloud to drop all this rain that you want. No, no. The fact that there's a cloud in the sky shows you that God is hearing something. But keep going, my daughter. Keep going, my son. Keep going, my child. Keep praying fervently, earnestly, effectually. Come on. Don't be discouraged by a little cloud. You notice that's all Eli ah, that's all Elijah needed. Soon as his servant said, Oh, there's a little cloud. <laughs> it's real small though, about the size of a man's hand. Elijah said, Oh, it's working. Tell Ahab to get ready. That's how you gotta be. Huh? When you plant a seed in the ground and you water it fervently, you make sure you nurture that seed and keep the soil moist. Because you want that beautiful dandelion or that tomato plant or whatever it is, a rose bush, whatever, right? But the minute you see a little bit of sprout, come on now, don't have doubt just because it's a sprout, huh? Just that little bit of green breaking from the earth is all you need and you know, oh, it's about to get it in, it's about to go down. Matter of fact, it's about to go up, <laughs> right? Because when you see that little sprout, you know it's breaking through. Give it a couple more days, it's going to break through some more. Before you know, you got a big, beautiful bush, a big uh, tomato plant or whatever it is you planted. So when he seen that cloud, it was a little sprout to him, but it's all he needed. Faith is like a mustard seed. The smallest seed produced the biggest tree. Will you start to earnestly pray? Do I really have to continue? I could and I want to. and <laughs> But will you make a commitment that if you declare victory, go earnestly pray for it? Huh? If you proclaim your husband to be saved or your wife or children or your neighbor or that hater on the job, don't just declare it like Elijah. Go earnestly pray too. Listen, a farmer don't just make a phone call and ring, ring, ring. Thank you for calling. Seeds are us. Thank you for calling Seeds are us. How could I take your order? Yeah, I'm going to order me 10 bags of uh, squash and cucumber and tomato, potato, faith like potatoes. You know what I'm saying? And you order all the seed. Ch check this out now. You order soil, you know what I mean, that nice rich fertilizer, it gets delivered to your house and you stop right there, you know that's not, that doesn't even make any sense, any wisdom. You had the seed delivered, but now you have to put in the work. You have to dig the ground, put the seed in, cover it back, water it, walk away. 
in hope that God will use that sun in that sky to shine its nutrient light into the earth and activate the seed. You're going out there. And you're witnessing the people. Now, maybe you're not the street preacher type. That whole street preacher title is totally taken out of context. Now, shout out to the real street preachers. I love you. Okay, it's a very hard job. But y'all already know how I feel. The majority of these so-called street preachers, I don't like their style. I don't like how they do it. And I don't really see any fruit. All I see is about 2,000 videos for their YouTube channel. Uh, and all they do is just talk but who how many listen there should be hundreds upon hundreds that get convicted think about what i'm saying where is the fruit right but if you are out street preaching or doing it right of course or maybe you just talk to someone at walmart when you go maybe you can't go out and dedicate two three hours a week to hit the streets Maybe you got too much children, uh, too many children. You got too many responsibilities. But you better be preaching to somebody, sister. You better be preaching to somebody, brother. Preach doesn't mean like preacher, like you're a pastor and you preach. No, it means proclaim. You better be telling somebody about the gospel. Male or female, we all have a job to do. To evangelize the lost, to teach them the word, of, to, to tell them about Christ. That's the first seed that you're supposed to plant in them. Send them this way. We will teach them properly through Christ, but plant the seed in them. But when you plant the seed in them, later that night or on your way, it could be on the highway coming home from Walmart. When you prayed with that woman outside of Walmart or when you prayed for that brother, on your way home, earnestly pray for them. Be like, Lord, I stand in the gap for that man, uh, Steve. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, please push that seed into him. Germinate it. Godspeed, Lord. Don't let the devil take that seed out of him, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm praying for rain like Elijah did. Drop rain on him, Lord. Activate him, Lord. Convict him, Lord. Block any devil... Uh, um, retaliation spirits. The tale of Satan. Crush it, Lord. Don't let the devil take it from him, God. And, and you're sitting there and you're, you're fervently, earnestly praying for that man or woman on your way home, on the highway. What? Who said you can't pray doing 65 in the smooth lane? Huh? But I know you should be convicted because you know very well you have not earnestly, but you have not been earnestly praying. It's time to earnestly pray. You will see how much more powerful your proclamations are, your declarations are, and your witnessing is when you earnestly pray. Amen. Amen. Pray with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, thank you for this amazing revelation. Lord, help me to learn how to pray better, wiser, sharper, and more powerful in the Holy Ghost. Lord, I thank you for this message. And I want to commit to earnestly pray, to spend more time in prayer, and not to make excuses. I can make time if I really want time. For the amount of time I spend on other things, more than likely technology, I most certainly can pray more in your presence. Lord, give me a hunger and a thirst to pray more. And to earnestly pray, effectual and fervent, that will avail much. That my prayers will be sincere and intense, conviction and serious. And give me more of a love for the lost. More of a love for my spouse or children. For my neighbors, co-workers, family members, old friends or new friends. That I have a sincere love for them. That I actually care for all of these people, Lord. Give me your heart, Jesus. Teach me, Lord, like you did Elijah, to look for the littlest sign of hope that you're working in that man's life, in that woman's life. Whether it's a husband or a wife, look for the little signs, you said. Look for the little sprout coming out without doubt. And Lord, I love you and I thank you for this message. 
Anoint me to earnestly pray and to pray through till I break through. That when I declare there'll be no rain, it doesn't stop there. I have to go into the cave and earnestly pray to you that you will sign off on my declaration that there'll be no rain. When I declare that the principality of murder will be struck down with a mighty blow, I have to go off in my closet or my prayer cave and get you to sign off on it by earnestly praying to you. Oh, Lord, when I have a plan ahead, whether I got to travel somewhere or maybe a conference coming up or whatever it is, or I have a meeting to meet with someone lost to witness to them. Like Jesus, Lord, you earnestly prayed all night into the morning for your 12 disciples. Because you knew you had to pray through and break through to move things around in the spirit realm to prepare the land and the to path to travel. Teach me to be more like you, Jesus, to pray more like you. Matter of fact, Lord, I live, but not I, but you live in me. So, Lord, there it is. There it is, brothers and sisters. Lord Jesus, earnestly pray through me. Oh, there it is. Holy Ghost, May I earnestly pray in you, and may Jesus Christ earnestly pray through me, that I faint not when I pray, that I don't get discouraged if the big storm cloud doesn't come right away, but I'm thankful for that little cloud the size of a man's hand. After all, Lord Jesus, you stretched out your two little cloud hands and nailed them to a cross for me. And it created a mighty storm and rain fell. The rain of salvation fell on men, women, and children. To whoever willeth, to whoever would call your name. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Jesus, thank you. Don't let the devil take this precious word from my heart. But rather, Lord, I earnestly pray now that you will water this word in me. And send your light to activate the seed. In Jesus Christ's name, I make the commitment, Lord, that whatever I proclaim, declare, or if I witness to somebody, or if I put the seed of the gospel in somebody, that, Lord, you will help me to remember it ain't over. I still have to earnestly pray later on that night or later on that day or right there on the spot, whatever you will it. I give you the praise. I give you the glory. I give you the honor. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. I am just so humbled by this message. I hope you enjoyed the message. I hope it encouraged you to pray better. You're better than that, sister. I'm telling you. Brother, you are better than 20-minute prayer. Think of how offensive this is to the Most High God, the Almighty, Elohim, Yeshua the Messiah. Just think how offensive this is. This right here was created by God, right? As far as all the elements, everything came from the earth, whether it's plastic, yeah, it was manipulated, but it's still elements that God allowed, right? It's not like God made Samson, but don't lose focus on what I'm saying. You will spend more time on this than you would with the Lord. That's not right, and I hope you're convicted. Cut your technology more than half, I'm telling you. Now, if you got to answer phones and things like that, it's not that you can't use technology. But when the average is four to six hours a day for the average person, you know very well the average Christian is not praying four to six hours a day. I'm sorry. That's a lie. You would be embarrassed if you knew the average prayer length of a Christian on a daily basis. Their quick little seven-minute prayer in the morning. Maybe they talk to the Lord a, a couple minutes here and there. And they do a little ten-minute prayer before bed. What a shame. I want to encourage you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to release this challenge. One, I challenge you to actually help spread the important videos. Okay, help spread these messages. Email this message to somebody. Text message the link to somebody you believe needs it. Okay, I'm not asking you to send it to everybody, okay? But send it to someone you know will need it.
but I want to, what's, what's up, you little cute moth? What are you doing? You trying to be on camera? Little moth trying to fly on my head here. You ever open up your door at night and they come fluttering in? You like, oh. But I challenge you for 30 days to pray for an hour straight. But I'm telling you, if you increase your prayer life, here's going to be my challenge to you. That you will increase your prayer life to at least half the time that you spend on technology. So if you spend four hours, now there's apps. You can actually you can actually find out through apps how much time you spend on your phone, on the television. I mean, the average show is 30 to 45 minutes long, right? Think about this logically now. For example, like... I'm that type. Like, I like that show, Restaurant Impossible, right? Now, I don't want to hear about, you know, I know it's a worldly show. But I get I tear up, like, when I see how, you know, restaurants get helped and families that were falling apart. And pray for that brother, uh, I think his name is Sir Robert or something. I pray he gets saved for real. Because he, he do got a big heart. But my point is, if I watch one Restaurant Impossible, I'm probably going to watch another one. Now think about that. That's a that's 40 minutes, 40 minutes, it's 80 minutes. It's an hour and 20 minutes just on a show. That's not including time I was on YouTube that day or I've scrolled into Facebook. So it's easy. Now, I don't watch shows. We don't have cable, but once in a while I like to watch a show. You know, which is fine as long as it's not nothing demonic. But my point is, is if you would just spend half the time. I'm not even asking you to do four to six hours, although you can if you want to, if you're that convicted. But even half the time, it's going to change your life, and you're going to email us and tell us about it. I'm telling you, Lord willing. So with that being said, I hope you increase your prayer life, and I hope you learn to how. I hope you learn through this message that Christ gave how to earnestly pray. Hmm. I'm done. I love y'all. Appreciate the time at the dinner table. Okay? Remember your gratitude determines your latitude. The best way for you to digest this message properly is to be grateful for Christ and also grateful for this ministry. We serve you. The Bible says show honor to those who labor and watch over your soul. All right? We'll see y'all soon. Bless.